Our main objection is to bring criminal steps and criminal action specifically against the CEO and other people that's involved. But this has to deliver the kind of evidence because you know the state agencies are not so, 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 so proactive. And we will also collaborate with Viceroy Research. Uh -huh. They were the people that originally uh, uncovered the irregularities uh -huh. and the companies continuously went and deny and deny until Marcus uh, Juister resigned from his position and then the share prices dropped by about 80%. Mr. Jo uh, Mr. Josh, when do you think you guys are going to be bringing criminal charges uh, and what a sort of criminal charges is it? Is it, is it look, sort of fraud or what? Yeah, no, look, we're looking at the issue of fraud. Uh -huh. We're looking at misrepresentation, intention to, 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 to cause harm. Those are the kind of charges. But if you look at other cases like the Alton Racket case, uh -huh. where similar directors had the um, uh, hands in the cookie jar, you know, it takes long, it's almost 10 years now. Mm. So this is not something that's going to be coming next week. Sure. But it's an important process because we need to clean up good corporate governance in South Africa. But for us it's very critical to take this matter forward, um, to protect workers' pension funds, because not only in South Africa, pension funds money has been affected by this. It was also the issue of our reputation as a nation. We saw four of the biggest banks in America, each of them lost more than a billion rand. And you can see if you don't have proper corporate governance, what can be the consequence of that?